Chairman Craven. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, my comments speak directly to the amendment. I did not have an opportunity to read this before this evening. I have read it. In some respects, I am uniquely qualified to speak to this issue because I worked for the Department of Attorney General and I was the recipient of the work product of the last special prosecutor in investigation known as RISDIC. I was the one who prosecuted those cases. So in that context, let me speak to you both as a lawyer, as a former prosecutor, historically, as to what the law, as it has happened and has been enforced in the past, and what I believe it would be today if this amendment were passed. First and foremost, the jurisdiction for prosecution, and with using the name special prosecutor and then enumerating those powers of the special prosecutor, this would be passing the jurisdiction of the Attorney General in contradiction to Article 1, Section 7 of the Rhode Island Constitution. So the bill seeks to amend an article of the budget at the same time it is attempting, without naming an amendment to the Constitution, which would need to be adopted by the voters. The general law specifically say article, uh, that Section 42.9-4 reserve all those powers to the Attorney General in statute. So if there war is going to be an attempt to create a special prosecutor, it would have to have at least been an amendment to that statute. Neither has taken place here. Quite frankly, uh, I feel the pain that people feel in this room and that people, when they speak to me on the street, what the hell's going on? Those answers have to come, but not this way. If a charge came forward, civil or criminal, I can assure you that it would come with some high-priced lawyers and they would challenge the action of the special prosecutor, the investigation, the subpoena power, and ultimately the byproduct of that. And there would be no choice, in my opinion, but for the Rhode Island Supreme Court to throw it out. Thank you. Craven. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I spoke briefly of my prosecutorial career. You don't make friends when you prosecute governors, banks, directors, politicians, and judges. I did that. I didn't talk the talk. I walked the walk. So for anyone to question or at least even suggest, and I'm not saying you are, Representative Morgan, that I wouldn't ferret out corruption. I did it for nine and a half years. And it wasn't a good career move in the long run. But I did the right thing, and I could put my head down on the pillow at night and sleep. As far as an investigation, I agree. But let's do it in a manner that would result in something other than 1.5 million wasted on lawyers for arguments or work product that would be thrown out by the court because this is not the method to do it. He will. Proceed. Well, you can't do it this way. And you've asked me a question, should it be done? My answer, absolutely. Is there a way to do it? Yes, there are ways of doing it. But it isn't before this body now. I don't intend to sit down or go home before I speak to the merits of this issue later on. But I'm trying to conduct myself appropriately under the rules and leave my comments to the amendment itself. So I will address that issue, Representative Morgan. 